Good morning, everyone. Hello. How are we? Hello, Olive. Hello, Oomph. There's some people who have been joining um, for our Geography Lives recently who are rejoining, which is great. Good morning, all. Um, welcome to this Aim High Live. Um, I'm Hannah. Um, I'm going to be doing some geography with you today, and it's going to be pretty. It's going to be pretty current. It's going to go back to some historical. Um, we're going to have some historical geography references. We're actually going to go back to a lot of the things we discussed in our borders lesson um, in relation to um, colonial history and the kind of formation of borders as a result of those of those colonial powers, including Britain. Um, so today's live is about um, good afternoon. Get out the freezer. Are you in another? I think you must be in another country where it is afternoon. Um, I'm assuming. Um, hello, one million sloths. What a great image is that? Um, okay, today's live is about the geography of race. So we thought it was really important, and I personally thought it was incredibly important for us to discuss this from a geographical perspective and to give you guys a bit of a chance to to talk about it and to try and understand it a bit better and understand, you know, you can hear a lot in the news about um, the incidents that ha have happened, that have built up to the protests that have happened in the US. So the the murder of George Floyd, um, the 46 year old man on the 25th of, of, um, of May. Um, and you, you probably read a lot about it. You've probably been reading a lot about it on social media. And I, I'm aware of, of of myself coming at this from a from a UK centric um, perspective, um, but I'm going to try and do it do it justice from a from the perspective of, of um, those in the US. And I'm also aware of talking about this as as a white person as well, and that actually um, I have. I will constantly and will always have to keep educating myself about the perspectives of people um, from minority backgrounds and, and, and those with from who've experienced, who've, who've grown up with a different, um, with different experiences to me, because race is very, um, race as an experience as a white person is something that people um, find really difficult to talk about and, and find quite awkward to talk about. And actually, I want to kind of prove that that this is a discussion that's not scary, and that um, yeah, good question. If is everyone is anyone here from the US? Just before we get started, because I really want to get different perspectives on this, and it would be brilliant to to know to know that to um, start off. Great, angels from the US. Hi, angel. Good morning. Nice to see you. Um. Okay. The the last. Uh, great. Okay. Um, just put lovely to have you on. Um, so I, I want to quickly before we get started, I want to make sure that everyone understands that what they say in the chat and what I'm going to say, we need to be really careful about, about the language we're using. And I don't want this to not be an open discussion, but I want us to be sensitive about, um, whether it's using racially stereotypical language, whether it's using kind of language of hate and of of violence, and this is not to deny like the experience of that we're the experience we're going to talk about and like and and how um, black people in the UK and the US have have, have experienced racial violence. And we will get into that a little bit, but I want us to just be really really think about what we're saying before we say it. Okay, that's the the commitment we're going to make. Okay, yeah, be nice, Olive. Be nice. That's the that's the only rule you need in life, right? Okay, let's get going. So, um, from a personal perspective, I would like you to tell me what the word race means to you. So, as an individual, when you hear that word, what immediately jumps into your head? Does it have a personal meaning? Do you think of what other people have said about it? Give me your thoughts. Tell me what you think. Being nice is free. That's such nice. Different types of beings. Okay, interesting. But the word difference came up straight straight away. One million sloths. 
different types. Okay. Heritage. Okay, it means your heritage and your background. Great. Angel, thank you. Um, doesn't have to be where you're born. Yes, Angel. Doesn't have to be. Have to be about where you are born. So, where you are born. Some people, this idea of heritage and background is also often associated with ethnicity. And this is what you put onto um, a census when you're asked to like identify yourself in the UK you're asked to identify your ethnicity so you might be black British you might be black Afro-Caribbean and that's often with uh, associated with shared language and culture okay let's keep going I'm going to look back at the chat because I've been documenting you can be mixed you can be mixed race absolutely you can be from a mixed background you can have parents from two different um Two different, two different races, two different ethnicities. What they believe in, okay, where someone's from, Oliver said where's, what they believe in and who they are. So race, race, absolutely, for some, I don't know whether this is like, Olive, you might be saying this um, from your own personal feelings and your perspective, who you are. But this idea of it being linked to a place is what makes it really geographical, okay? Um, racial identities are all different. One million sloths, you're absolutely right. Different, different types. We've not done good grammar there. I have not done good grammar. But they can be all, they're all different. So as in you, your identity, like what forms your identity as person. Now we're getting into kind of sociology, which I, I, I've been trying to read up more about. Um, but actually my, my knowledge lies more in kind of how race has been used in the past and in the present to create inequalities and that's what kind of what we're going to focus on and their history as well so history good we've got some brilliant brilliant I think we are we are kind of coming to the end of that one um great okay so that leads us nicely into this idea of place okay so what makes race geographical is about where different races live, okay? So um, housing can often, in lots of cities, um, can anyone think of another of another way that race might be geographical? So we've already said it might be linked to where you're from. So the country um, your parents were born in. Effect where you migrate to. Thank you, Rebecca. Absolutely. So where, so you might want to migrate to a country where you feel like your race is accepted and that your, that people of your own, I'm going to, I'm going to continue to use the, the term ethnicity and race interchangeably, but we'll, I'll try to avoid that. But where people of your, of your race live. So you might feel more because of this shared heritage, shared culture, you might feel more comfortable, especially with issues to do with this discrimination. If you are a minority group, you might choose to move to a place where this is this is a historic migration. OK, so, for example, um, during the 1950s and 60s, many Afro-Caribbean people um, moved to London to fill jobs after the Second World War. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, but this. So I'm going to put Brixton as being a centre of Afro-Caribbean culture, so post-World War II. Birthplace of family, yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. So we've got migration, we've got, it, this might affect, um, there's there's huge issues to do with inequality, and this is kind of historic um, in terms of where uh, black and um, minority groups have, have been able to live due to the types of jobs that they have um and I'm talking about this mainly from the perspective of London because it's you can we're going to look at some maps in a little bit later and you'll see that actually there is there's kind of clear spatial patterns to to where particular um there's the concentrations of of 
of certain particular races in London. It's not as bad as other cities, and I was going to compare it to Paris, but um, yeah, it's it, it definitely shows up when you look at the kind of the, the the spatial patterns. We think about this also in relation to like socioeconomic um, factors. So one thing to be really clear about is that um, race is race is something that's a social has essentially developed over time as a pattern of socioeconomic um, outcomes. So we, so people of colour um, in the UK have suffered discrimination when it comes to employment. They've suffered um, issues to do with even landlords being, allowing them to rent homes, all of these factors. And this means that this has created kind of, oh, this has created inequality. And so the the school that I work in, that's um, very close to South London, um, we work a lot on kind of building um, the idea of like black role models in the community of of trying to be really, really clear that, that aspirationally you can do whatever job you want to do, um, regardless of what of, of your skin colour and, and what you look like. So trying to in, in improve those those aspirations improve the employment practice of people as well posy joe you're absolutely right it shouldn't be like that so let's go back to what this was like in the past now i apologize because i had did have some maps more images that i wanted to show you and unfortunately um my computer was freezing and the internet was like freaking out a little bit today so um yeah Oh, this is where we're going back to the past. Has has nine? You have asked a great question, and it relates exactly to what we're about to talk about now. How has Britain, as a country, how has Britain, um, in the past, engaged with people from African nations? Does anyone know what our history with Africa involves? And this relates to the borders lesson that we've already done. Right, here we go. Merciful, thank you. Great screen name. Colonialism. So, colonialism is the control of nations outside of your own borders um, for territorial gain and for resources gain. So, colonialism, a lot of this was all about raw materials, was trying to import sugar, tobacco, um, cotton, raw cotton. Um, and obviously this links to, and um, you're absolutely right, this links to slavery. Now, Britain's involvement in the slave trade ended in 1807. I had to look that up because I was, I was on like 1800s, like 1807, okay, when the slave trade was abolished. Now, what was confusing about Britain's involvement in this, that people kind of say, oh, you know, well, it was different, it was different to the USA, it was, it was very different in the UK, was that we profited from the slave trade. So we were essentially in control of this, the, um, the sort of the slave, the slave triangle. And annoyingly, again, this map, I haven't got this map and it's, I'm going to have to be, you're going to have to stop me if I'm like not explaining this well. Oh, just, but I'm going to come back to what you just said, by the way, in a second. So, the what this involves was boats and, and essentially like private companies that were based in places like Bristol um, that ran the actual slate, the route, the trade route, okay? So, Britain controlled... Um, this sort of this 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 slave trade for a very long time. American colonies also were involved in this and were part of this exchange, but essentially what it was was an exchange of um, black people taken from the West African coast in huge amounts, like the millions and millions of people that were taken um, in the slave trade are unfathomable the the statistic that always really hits home for me is that actually two million um two million people black people died on route from west africa to the united states um and this is a like shocking shocking statistic but a really important one because it shows 
the attitude towards black bodies and, and the way that, that they were considered as property um, during this time. So essentially, this all boils down to and Edward or oh, Angel, great knowledge. So Angel's just said they just tore down the Ed, Edward Colston statue in Bristol and tossed him in the harbour. Did they actually do that? I need to check the news. I don't know whether they were trying to petition for it to happen, but maybe they've just taken it into their own hands and um, and done that. Um, Angel, I have to look it up. Let me know. Um, yeah, interesting. So and um, yes, they did. One million soft said. Okay, interesting. That's like a great a, it's a very important statement that today we don't agree with the way that um with the way that 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 trade happened and we don't subscribe to the racism of that time right so the idea that you take down the the role models like that he is like essentially someone you look up to and go what was hit what were his values that is a kind of really important statement isn't it um but anyway let's move on the um, Jizz, I'm, I'm gonna, rep um, I am gonna address what you just said, but we're just gonna carry on. So this is I, this idea, um, came from this idea of white, um, superiority. Okay, so this idea that white people were essentially, um, were essentially better and more civilized and um, more kind of advanced. Um, as a civilization, um, than than black people, and that actually that that made us a kind of a more important race, a superior race. Okay, and this essentially this idea drove colonialism. It drove the actions of people who traded um, raw materials, um, people who profited from um, from the British Empire. Okay. So this kind of historic positioning of race and, and white people and the British people, you know, even themselves, like being sort of proud of the empire, proud of their achievements. This is something that over time has has still filtered into the way that, that people and institutions, and we'll talk about institutions in a sec, think about race. Okay, this is making it harder because I've not got as many like images and I'm really sorry because I'm, I'm trying hard to explain. Let me just go back to the chat just while we think about um, uh, these ideas. There's still white slaves in the Ottoman Empire. Right, okay. Um, um, just pop, I think what you're, are you asking, um, are you asking whether like who's more racist? Because that's like what race is more racist? <laughs> because obviously the stereo racial stereotyping does go both ways but what we're talking what we're talking about today is these sort of like undeniable socioeconomic factors that show that black people in the UK are often discriminated whether it's in employment whether it's in the type of housing that they're allowed to um that they're allowed to rent um and they're able to rent with the the money that they own that they earn sorry um and with even with just general comments about uh, the way that they see themselves in relation to to white people and kind of how white is like in like makeup adverts in um films that actually there's a lot of emphasis on like white being white being right which is this this expression that i keep coming across when i'm reading things at the moment um but yeah, so just put, I think we'll like park that because I think like if you, if we like try and make it a competition of like which group is, is more racist, it's not looking at the facts of like what is it that's creating this inequality and what is it that's, that's um, essentially holding black people back from achieving their, um, you know, their potential and black children, the black, the my black students as well is what I'm coming at this from. That's the way. Yeah, I was talking about the Colson Hall thing. Okay, great. I'm getting sidetracked as per usual. Right, in the present, let's talk about um let's talk about this. So I'm gonna show you a map of um of the UK, of sorry, of London. So this is um this is a map of the kind of the spread of black African Caribbean black British 
um, ethnic groups in London. And what I wanted to highlight is that in London, even though there are some concentrations, higher concentrations in, say, South London, Northwest London, here in Wilston, Wilston and Northwest London, Edgware, these areas here. That actually, we are quite lucky in London in that we do have, we haven't, like in the US, we haven't necessarily got a, the idea of a ghetto so that the, on the outskirts of cities, and I've been talking to friends about this um, in European, for the European cities as well, is that we, and I'm going to try and spell ised, ghettoized, ghettoized, that we haven't had this, we haven't had this because of this idea of, of um, the Affordable Housing Act, so the, the patchwork quilt model, which is what a friend referred to it as, um, and that anywhere, you have to have affordable housing anywhere in London, okay? Now, if we look at another um, another map, we can see that very good health, so the top, in a, this is in, from census data, very good health exists in West London in really high concentration. So this is like someone who doesn't need to go to the doctor that much, is able to go to work every day, is able to um, stay fit and healthy without too much kind of medical um, engagement. But you can see that as we get towards South London and some of these areas, um, areas you can see in Northwest, that actually there is a correlation um, between sort of the uh, less good health and some um, health conditions like heart disease, um, some lung conditions as well in minority groups because of deprivation and because of the um, of maybe due to sort of facts to do with unemployment and again that kind of housing that people live in. So this is kind of what we need to consider when we're looking at um, the kind of geography of race in the UK particularly is what what does it show about the barriers to um, particular minority groups? Okay, the barriers like we say them achieving achieving their um, their potential. Okay, so one um, has anyone seen the film Black Panther, Marvel film? Again, I wanted to show you a picture of they've like amazing CGI of like the environment that. Um, right, why was Black... Some people are saying, yep, yep, yep. Um, why was Black Panther such a big deal um, when it came out? Why did people in the US, all over the world, it wasn't just in the US, it was in the UK, it was in um, African nations, it was in Southern Asian, Asian, Asian countries... Why was it such an important film? There were, there were, I think there were all black actors, Rebecca. There might be the odd white person in there. Black community power, here we go. Thank you, 30, 314 N8. Black community power. So showing the, the kind of, the, um, the saviour of that film as a black person is a huge, huge deal. Because superheroes haven't been presented as black people in the past. It's been this idea, again, of like white, of white being the powerful race and white people being the ones that are going to save others, like less fortunate um, from, from their situations, right? Um, some people are, are, hating on, are hating on Marvel a little bit, which is fine. I'm personally not a massive fan of Marvel. But more, it's more that the, how it presented black a black nation of power as well and that's similar um similar in other alternative literature um not alternative literature what am i saying it's just a great novel um noughts and crosses you might have heard of um miss saying the original comics were written during the civil rights era in the 1960s oh cool miss i didn't know that i thought it was like a more recent um script that was written and story that was written great so again this like this shows that what I wanted to highlight with the Black Panther film is that black culture and whether that's that that comes under lots of different um 
categories, whether that's um, music, so rap culture, rap music, um, uh, anything like electronic, lots of like electronic music as well, um, reggae, um, soul music, um, so much, there's so much that actually we have, we now like have to do, we have to celebrate about um about black culture and make sure that the kind of history of that is is taught in schools as well as the history of colonialism as well um yeah noughts and crosses is a brilliant book angel um mallory blackman really brilliant wonderful book don't watch the tv show before you read the book because the the book is brilliant Mm. oh my god merciful thank you and jazz um there's a really amazing documentary about Miles Davis, um, Miles Davies, um, on BBC iPlayer, so check it out, it's incredible, um, and it taught me a lot about how he was basically pioneered, like, every era of jazz music, and, yeah, blues music, R&B, yeah, come on, and also, so, this, in the present, what I wanted to leave us with is this idea that, actually the kind of the definition of like race and and looking at it from a kind of non-geographical perspective and just from the a position of like sharing knowledge and sharing um sharing understanding across like race lines and again I'm like in the UK using that word race does sometimes feel feel less like we use ethnicity and like ethnicity being the this like shared language and culture because race like in the colonial era in the past was used based on like physical characteristics and was um, racial profiling still happens today um with stop and search and with and that's still a huge huge issue in the UK um but it I've got loads of people by the way on the chat telling me like re- highlighting all of the, the the music that we would not have without black culture which is just so true so we've got jungle drum and bass um is it with this african so like things like afrobeat and jamaican influences absolutely but like, afrobeat has influenced so many um different uh genres of music um hairstyles yeah absolutely um so like so many things that we have to celebrate and what I wanted to highlight was that actually in the present that we need to use social media and use this the technology we have um that we have have at our fingertips to just to share like share important messages about whether it's about discrimination and about inequality but also to share the the positive messages of like what what it is that either black people have achieved or black people and white people together have achieved and try to kind of try to make it a conversation that's not that isn't that is open and that is honest and that that we we constantly reassess we assess reassess our um our ideas of these things so understanding the history of where that the the of where that sort of geography um of inequality comes from Akala, you might have already heard of, and I keep pronouncing his name wrong, so I apologise if I have done that. Um, amazing play that he has on iPlayer called The Ruins of Empire. It's like all, um, there's a lot of uh, digital um, imagery along with him acting in and speaking um, his poetry and the actual play that he's written. His book Native um, is also, I've heard, brilliant. I can't claim to have read it, but it's on my list. Um, George the Poet, incredible political activist and um, and spoken word artist. Um, and he his Instagram is really informative. I found really helpful at kind of um, having, yeah, having a kind of clear way to talk about the inequalities that exist. And as we said, we can kind of look at this from a spatial point of view as well. Um Angel sharing some good ideas. Fantastic. Radical women history, women's history. Brilliant. Let me add this to my slide so that I don't forget it as well. At radical women's histories. Great. Posting a lot about historical 
um, black women in the last few weeks. Very interesting to read. Great. Fantastic. Thank you, Angel. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to share as well? I've re- So the ne- next woman I'd like to share is um, Chimamanda uh, Ngozi Adichie. Really hope I've said her name right because I respect her so much, um, <laughs> and I must. And I, ha- I, I and I was saying before this is like something you have to, you have to do, have to respect the way you pronounce people's names, um, uh, because actually that is their that's their name. It's their it's how they identify themselves. You can't just like throw it away as like just because it's not Hannah that you don't pronounce it properly. You have to show people respect by doing it properly. So, which is always when I get a new class in school, always have to make sure I learn names accurately. So she's written an amazing book called Americana, all about um, a Nigerian woman moving to the US, um, seeing race um, coming from the, from Nigeria, a, a majority black country, and then seeing how black people are treated in the US and kind of coming to terms with that. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, book. Her TED Talk, she's got two TED Talks, a lot of it focusing on feminist issues, really, really fantastic. Um, people are sharing what is the hist- uh, la, 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 la. what is the history of the N-word? Is that the name of the TV show? Maybe on Netflix. Um, when They See Us, um, about five black teenagers, thank you, get out of the freezer, when five black teenagers who were falsely accused of um, rape in New York, fantastic. And actually that's... Um, That's important stories to tell. In the UK, a lot of people during this time, um, after the George Floyd murder, were donating money to pay for bail for um, black people um, who were uh, accused or I think were being held in custody, um, accused of maybe like a number of crimes that, that, um, that they they were just like picked up off the street. So a lot of this is like stop and search. Some of it is drug related. But again, as Akala um, points out, we have to look at, and George the Poet as well, we have to look at the reasons why those issues exist in the, these communities. A lot of it's to do with, um, it's to do with, is to do with economic inequalities, socioeconomic inequalities. Um, okay. Da, da, da. Great. This um, Now, inspiring organisations, places that, you can go to read up more, not from a kind of, um, obviously there's a lot of like creative, uh, creatives will talk about this and this uh, important important people to listen to. And they they have a really incredibly clear political narrative as well. Black, like, uh, Black Minds Matter, great um, account and organisation um, that focuses on black mental health and, um, and tries to uh, steer individuals and um, companies in the right direction to deal with um, these mental health issues that the black community suffer and if you're interested there's an amazing this idea of epigenetics is one that um, that people have looked into so the idea that you have inherited the trauma that exists in your genes from um, if you are related to someone who's experienced um, violent racism or has been um, a part of the slave, uh, slave trade so epigenetics, if you're interested in the biology of that, I might ask if Matt wants to do one on this. Um, okay, stand up to racism, yes. Um, uh, Tad Nunu, nu, Tad Nunu. Nu. Um, thank you so much. And the 13th, yeah, very good about um, the criminalisation of black people in the US. Amazing documentary on, on Netflix. Remember the Titans, interesting um, Alec, is that that's it? I've not heard of this one. And then, so Black Lives Matter, a global movement, incredible movement that organised the protests on Saturday. Um, and then, show race in the red racism red card. This is stamping out racism in football um, in the UK. And then, the Runny Mead Trust is a kind of policy organisation that have a very good Instagram account that shares again these kind of facts about how. Um, why there are there is discrimination and why there's inequality um for black people in the uk so i would really encourage you to check those out um i'm going to keep uh yeah angel epigenetics um i'm going to keep keep chatting going on the chat i'm going to be here for a little bit longer i've gone massively overstay that's partly because i've not been talking about the images and the maps i wanted to show you i'm really sorry i hope you found this informative and I hope that this has given you something, some food for thought. And I hope that um, if anyone is is kind of struggling with the with the kind of the news at the moment and and 
is feeling overwhelmed as uh, um, as a person of colour, um, if you're watching, then I really hope that, um, yeah, that this this is something that you can, uh, that yeah, this is something that's 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 given you a little bit of um, the kind of history to talk about and the geography to talk about, um, and that this is an open discussion, like I said. Um, yeah, great. Okay, cool. Thanks, Angel. So worth talking about. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right, Posey Joe. Stop um, voting, base, voting for racist governments. Good. Absolutely. We need to make it part up at the political agenda, um, top of the political agenda, all of these issues. Okay. Um, okay, people, I'm have gone over I used, was getting better at this. I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut the cord now. But thank you so much for being here and um yeah, take care. Take care of yourselves.